Now we are looking at GitHub. On this main page of Getty's data provenance data, you may find some information regarding the files they have uploaded. When you click on the tab Go to File up here, you will see a variety of files to download. Be in mind that the provenance files from the Getty are very large and this is why they have been split up in many files and that even the single files are quite heavy. You can either view the files or download them for further processing. The choice depends on your internet connection and on your computer's capacity. Let us now switch to OpenRefine. OpenRefine is a tool for messy data. You can clean data, model data, enrich data and visualize data. For an introduction to OpenRefine, please watch my other video. I will be showing here only some easy steps to give you an impression of the potential use of this tool. There are several ways how to upload data into OpenRefine. You can either upload data from your own computer or paste an URL string and upload directly from the web. This is what we are doing here. If we look at the data file and the preview mode of the data file, we can simply copy this URL, go back to OpenRefine, paste it here and click Next for uploading the data. Now the data is uploaded. As you see, OpenRefine displays the headers correctly on the top. If it's not the case, you can model it on the previous step. The data now needs to be cleaned and modeled because hardly any data set that you download from the net is free of errors. For brevity's sake, we will skip this step. Of course, your data set is very large and it needs further steps to analyze it. Let me show you only one quick possibility. We are interested in the sale end year, which is displayed here and would like to explore when the majority of acquisitions have been made. The rubric is only giving a year, which OpenRefines does not understand as being a year. Therefore, we need to transform it. Clicking at these files, you have several possibilities. Under Common Transform, you can transform this number to a date. Now OpenRefine is working on it. You see you have, we have 16,000 plus rows and you can't visualize all your data at one time, but OpenRefine is an easy tool to address transformation of data all in one step. So now that this process has stopped, we can click once again on the cell end here, choose the facet and look at the timeline facet, which will build up in a moment on our left. Here you see the salient years, which is any time between the years 1672 and 1992. And if I now wanted to only look at those sales years that were the most busy, I could simply refine my search at this end, look at the busiest years, and I see those were between 7064 and 1841. And what happened is that likewise on the right, the result list that I'm getting has been diminished and cut off by these other years, which I am now no longer visualizing. I'm now working only with years of sales in this timeline facet. Let us now look at Palladio. Palladio is a visualization tool which would need clean data in order to see reliable results. For brevity's sake, we will use the raw data set of the Getty once again. You have several possibilities of uploading data into Palladio. You can create a new project and load data from your own computer, existing data set. You can load 
data from an URL address, as we have done with OpenRefine, but you can also very simply copy and paste data into it. Let us look quickly once again at our raw data file from the GitHub, um, the Getty Museum provenance file, which is a CSV file in a raw data format. Another possibility to upload data is in Opaladio that I can simply copy and paste data and Palladio will understand nevertheless that this is a CSV file and how the CSV file is built. I copy this data, go back to Palladio and paste it. And then next step is I load it. Once the data is loaded, you will see a column here is on the left and the respective category on the right. You would now need to check every entity to see if this corresponds, if the text, numbers, dates and geocodes are assigned correctly. Palladio offers a variety of visualizations with geolocations, tabular forms, timelines and network graphs. Let us have a look at these options later. We are now on the graph tab, but what you see up here. We like to visualize auction house names with their respective cities. I can choose by clicking here on the appropriate tab that I would like to visualize, also for the sale locations, and say that I would like to highlight the sale locations. And Palladio is building a network graph for me. And what we are seeing here now is our cities with their respective auction houses that are active in the city. Brussels, Antwerpen, Ghent and in other places. As we have only taken a short snippet out of the provenance data, we are only seeing limited results. But the graph should make clear what Palladio is aiming at. But we can also do more than that. Let us also look at the timeline and see in which year auction houses had the biggest sales. I need to adjust the boxes here on the right. I've chosen the sale end year and the auction house name. And this gives me the timeline on the left, the year an auction house was active. And when I hover over it, I can see the name of the auction house that was active in this respective year. Many more visualizations would be possible if we had modeled the data before in OpenRefine. We could have, for example, also georeferenced the city and the auctions and the vendors and visualize them on the map. Try and do the same with the data set of the Museum of Modern Art. Search for the data set on GitHub, download the CSV file and explore these data in a second step with OpenRefine and Palladio. Data sets on GitHub need subsequent tools you need to use to get meaningful information out of these. But there are also other methods where you apply queries directly in the database of cultural heritage institutions. These query techniques, which are using the possibilities of the semantic web, are the topic of part two of querying museum data on the web. Thanks for watching.